Good morning, guys. How are you? It is Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, and it's time for our next Learn to Blog Hangout. Um, usually it's Crystal and Kelly. Uh, today it's just me. You're stuck with just me. Um, Kelly is in the, it, as you guys know, Kelly lives in um, Alabama near the Gulf Coast, and the storms are really bad there, and she has zero internet. They're predicting that she won't have internet till 4 o'clock today. So, um, she texted me this morning and let me know, and um, we are, we're fine. We'll be good. It'll be me and you, and Kelly has uh, sent me her information that she wanted to ensure that we covered today in this Hangout, and I've got my notes as well, and I'm wanting a lot of feedback from you guys today, too. This is going to be, um, we always want your questions and your involvement and your input, but this is a hangout that the topic today is something that you guys are going to be able to share tons of information about because you've been there. And uh, many of you are seasoned bloggers or have been spending some time getting your blog off the ground level. So I'm really eager to see what kind of input you have. So bear with me today because um, it's just going to be me and I'm going to be toggling between screens, checking the event page for your input. Um, but I'm so happy that you're here. So to introduce myself for those that are just viewing in or checking in for the first time, I'm Crystal Van Tassel, Dallas Mom Blogger at crystalandcomp.com. And Kelly and I started these Learn to Blog Hangouts a year, a little over a year ago. We, um, it was a year ago in February. And it's just so crazy that it's been that long. And every week, with the exception of a few weeks, we've taken some weeks off here and there or unexpected things happen and we have to take some time away. But um, each week we come here on Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time to share with you a free Learn to Blog Hangout. Um, when Kelly and I, or when I first started blogging, which my blog is six years old, I think Kelly's blog is eight years old, um, when, when I first started blogging there was really no one to turn to and Kelly was my first mentor and so from there we've just kind of built relationships and, and, um, and have grown with each other and she was, like I said, she was my first mentor and now um, we love to pay that forward and help other people as well because sometimes the great things in blogging that are that are the successes that people are experiencing, sometimes that stuff is hush-hush and people don't like to share um, their pointers and tips or secrets. So um, Kelly and I have been pretty forthcoming in sharing that information with you guys. So thank you for being here. I'm so glad that everyone is here. Um, Hillary, thank you for prayers for Kelly. I know that she will certainly appreciate that. Um, there's, I have family in Georgia too, and um, which is a little bit further beyond Kelly, but they've got crazy weather there as well. So I guess these storms, right now it's not storming in Texas, but I imagine at some point it will arrive here. So today's topic came from, um, I received a comment on my blog um, a couple of weeks back. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Hi Crystal, right now I basically have an online diary that I've been posting to for a few months. I enjoy it and know that I would like to grow into a blog in the future. <clears throat> I think it's funny how, <clears throat> or I think it's interesting how, um, you know, some of us refer to it as a blog, some of us refer to it as a diary, some of us refer to it as a site, and really it's all the same. I mean, a lot of us, our blogs started out as diaries, as a um, an online way to, for family to keep up with our babies and our, you know, from for family that lives far away to be able to keep up with what's going on where we live with our babies and our husbands and our life. Um, and a lot of times that stuff is exactly what morphs into a blog or a site. Blogs, websites, it's all the same. She says, I enjoy it and know that I would like to grow into a blog in the future. Can you give me some ideas on what I should do first? For instance, I don't have any visitors and I really don't know where to begin. And that's the thing. A lot of times when we start off as an online diary of sorts, if that's what we're going to call it, um, it's still a blog and it's still a site. But a lot of times when we start off this way, um, it's typically just our family that's reading it. And so we're not focusing on SEO. We're not focusing on... Um, the proper way to template a blog post for the search engines to try to to uh, to scan it. We're not thinking about building communities or having a feed. We're not thinking about all of those things. So oftentimes, the only time people read those read a blog that's more of a journal um, 
is, or a diary, is whenever we say, hey mom, I just posted some new pictures of the babies up on the, on the site, share it with your friends, and that's pretty much the only way that we get traffic, right? So she says, I'm at a total loss as to where to start, and I can relate because my blog, website, whatever you want to call it, really was more like an online journal in the beginning. And she says, I've been enjoying the tips and advice that you share in your Learn to Blog Google Plus Hangouts, but I really don't know where to start at the ground level. I appreciate any advice. So as I'm reading through her comment, initially I'm like, she needs to check out our Learn to Blog stuff. Hell, that's great. Awesome. Perfect match. But then I realized a lot of the stuff that we share is beyond the ground level. A lot of the stuff that we share in our Hangouts is very much the things that... Um, that are you've already started, you're already going, now here's how you get those dominoes falling down, here's how you get that snowball rolling. Um, we really go into, we really hit the ground running and I can tell you that um, I've had other people tell me that they have friends who are who will come to them and say I'm thinking about starting a blog, how, can you help me, where do I start, how do I begin and that, I mean these are reminders that people really, really, really still do need very basic information. We, there's, there's groups that need more advanced information, but we still need to be hitting that very basic information as well. Hillary says, mine started out way more like an online diary, an extension of my scrapbook hobby. Hillary, that is a lot of people. A lot of people do that, do just that. I mean, we really, you know, there's many moms who, who do it to share information with family. There's people who do it so that their kids have something to look back on in 25 years to see, um, you know, their scrapbook of, of their life, of their childhood, etc. And then what happens is we realize this voice that we have, we resonate and connect with people, and then these brands and sponsors start to see the influence that we have because it's just like when I find a great barbecue sauce that I love that I've been searching for a high fructose corn syrup free barbecue sauce and I tell my girlfriends about it they're like you know oh my goodness and then they're telling their friends and essentially that's the same kind of platform that we have online with our blogs and these sponsors and brands see that and so then that's where things just kinda of start to morph I mean my blog has done a lot of morphing I think Kelly would say that her blogs done a lot of morphing as, as well Vanessa says, yes, Crystal, and many of us are self-taught, so there are gaps in our learning. Nobody shares like y'all. Well, I'm so happy that you feel like we share so transparently and openly. And Vanessa, you're right. A lot of us are self-taught. It's so funny because I look at, you know, what I know now about blogging and what I knew seven years ago about blogging. And, um, yeah, I mean, basically, we're doing some coding and we're doing, um, there's a lot of technical stuff that, that we're doing and now my neighbor will come over and say can you help me do this and I'm like yeah actually I can and we are self-taught and we're just I mean it's really it's really kinda cool how it all plays out but I am going to share with you um, how this is the this is gonna be I'm hoping this is gonna be the perfect hangout that you can share with your friend that comes to you and says I wanna start a blog what's the ground level what do I need to do first what are the must-have things that I need to do and this will hopefully be that per that perfect content that they can um, that they can watch and learn from and get going. So these this is I'm going to share with you what my responses were to her, and then I'm also going to share with you um, what Kelly's tidbits are or Kelly's pointers and tips as well. So um, the very first thing that I said to her was to develop social media communities online. Um, now. <clears throat> this was assuming many things and Kelly brought up a good point that the very first thing is to purchase um, your URL and so that was me assuming that this person had already purchased their URL but that's so true so let me tell you in the very beginning when I started my blog it was um, I think it was for crazy children dot blogspot dot com well then we had five children and then whenever I wanted to go in and um, whenever I named my blog and, and started changing things up and I wanted a URL now I had to change all of that kind of stuff and redirect and repoint and that can be a real pain so when you reach the point that you know that you want to start a blog or you want to take this blog to a new level the very first thing that you need to do is go get your URL because once you start branding yourself 
uh, it's very easy for someone to go out there and grab that URL and then you have to buy it from them and that's a lot of times pricey and ugly and just not obtainable. So absolutely the very first thing you want to do is buy your URL that matches whatever this brand is going to be. So um, honestly if I had it to do all over again I probably would have just bought my first and last name. Um, but Crystal and, Comp, um, Crystal and Company was not available. There's a big glass company, I believe it is, that owns crystalandcompany.com. So that wasn't available. So do I do Crystal and Co? Do I do Crystal and Comp? That was all the back and forth and on and on. And finally, I just settled with Crystal and Comp. Um, actually, I don't even think Crystal and Co was available. So, um, so the very first thing is to buy that URL. So then. Now, now that you have the URL, you've given some thought to branding and to what your voice is going to be, and it's time to secure that same information on social media. So my advice was to develop a social media community on every platform, linking them back to your blog. You want This needs to include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, and Pinterest. You need to have icons for these communities above the fold on your blog so that readers can easily follow you there. One of the first things that you're going to learn is is that people do not want to have to work hard to figure out how to connect with you outside of just your website or your blog. If you're on Facebook or Instagram, they don't want to have to go and do lots of searching to figure out how to follow you there. Okay, So you need to take that groundwork out, that legwork out for them. So you're going to put it above the fold immediately when your site loads. That's one of the first things that they'll see. Oh, these are all the ways that I can connect with her. Okay. Number two, another reason why you want to do that is because this is a great pointer that Lori Turk brought up from Tip Junkie in her Mom Blog Money Blog series, which is a great series um, that's out there that teaches you um, about blogging. But the, one of the reasons you want to do it is because if you don't, someone else is going to grab those communities. Somebody else is going to go and start Crystal and Comp on Instagram. And as soon as a new platform opens, so like, um, you know, when Pinterest just came about three years ago or whenever that was, we were all scurrying to get in there to buy our, or not to buy, but to secure our platform there, our profile that was part of our brand. That's really, really important. You don't want for people to say, okay, is she Crystal Van Tassel here and Crystal and Co there and Crystal with five kids there? You know, what is she? You want it to all be uniform and the same. This needs to be, this, you do not want for this to be a lot of work for the people that are following you. Um, let me see some of these questions that are coming through. She said, let's see, okay. Um, <clears throat> Cassie says, I think we, even those of us that have been blogging for a while can learn from, from beginning tips, I think is what she's saying. It says begging tips, but beginning tips, don't beg. Don't beg for tips, I'll give them to you. Kelly and I just give them away. Um, <clears throat> Mitzi says, true Cassie. I'm always discovering those beginner tips that I didn't know. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Kelly and I are bouncing ideas off of each other and we're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? And sometimes just the most obvious things we don't think about and we get involved in the more, um, we focus more on the involved details. And so some of the simpler things really are um, the things we need to pay attention to. Cindy says, be sure to remind new bloggers about the hangout you did on the top things your blog must have and a few things it shouldn't. I found that one extremely useful. Yes, we will. I will go uh, when this is over or if somebody wants to go to the learntoblockhangouts.com website and pull that link and add it here, that would be great. Um, that, is a, that is a very good, we've done tons of um, awesome hangouts just on you know, all the different things that you should and shouldn't do and the top five must-haves and the top ten must-haves and I agree, Cindy, so much of that information is really, really useful. Uh, Brain Power Boy says, I know I have done a lot of things wrong and some I am unsure how to change. For example, with social media, I used my business name instead of my name and I don't think I should have done that. Everyone else here seems to use their name. No clue how to fix it. I'm sorry, guys. I have a head cold. Um, I, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, on Google+, Plus, we do use our name, but on all other... And, and then you should also secure your uh, your blog. So Crystal and Comp, even though you may not be using that on Google+, you want to secure that so that no one else gets it. But on Twitter and Facebook and uh, Instagram and all of those places, we I really suggest that it's the name of your blog. 
that it's the name of your brand unless your name is your brand. But it's really hard for people to remember that Brain Power Boy and um, whatever your first and last name are are that person. So that's just one more thing for them to have to remember. So I don't, if you have set things up with your business name, I think that that's a great choice. Um, now, Google Plus, a lot of people do use their personal profile and then secure their business or their blog profile, but don't really use the blog profile. Um, but I think you're doing just fine. Hillary says, um, Barb, or Barbara, thank you so much for sharing that link. Um, she says, you can, Hillary says, you can easily change your Twitter name. I have a personal Facebook and a page for my blog. Google is a little harder to modify. Um, so yeah, just look into going into Twitter and changing, um, changing that information. And like on Twitter, I believe if you go to my Twitter, obviously my handle is at Crystal and Co, I think, because Crystal and Comp, or maybe it is, I don't remember. Anyway, um, but you can add your name in there so that it says what your real name is, but your Twitter handle is your business name. Um, I think Vanessa's trying to find, is this the Hangout you were referring to, Cindy? Uh, you must have must have blog pages. Um, there's a lot of, y'all can share all of those links here because there's we did a bunch of different Hangouts on must have, five do's, five don'ts, 10 must haves, top plugins, all that stuff is really important. Okay, so um, Kelly also agrees. Kelly's words were social media in your brand name. That's something that's very important, and I, we've elaborated on why that's why that's key. Number two, have it have an easy option. This was my second response to my. I gave her five must do things. Number two was have an easy option for subscribing by email to your daily post. I use Mad Mimi for my RSS feed. FeedBurner from Google is also an option and it's free. This reminds folks to visit your site every time you post. So this is key. This is really, really key because um, every time you, you have a new blog post that goes out, you can't get on the phone and call everybody and say, okay, it's there. And you can go on Facebook and say, okay, new blog post, but not everybody likes Facebook. You can go on Instagram and do it. You can go on Twitter. You can go to all these community communities individually and say, new blog post, go read it. But not everybody's on every media platform. So, and not everybody's seeing everything that you share on those platforms, like we've talked about with our struggles with Facebook. I think it's important to hit every platform you can because you have Facebook readers, you have Pinterest readers, you have people that rely on certain social media. So it's important to hit them there. But it's also <clears throat> super important that you have this RSS feed. And I would just start with a free one. Um, you could start with Google Feed Burner, or if you are ready to, um, Mad Mimi and MailChimp do have free versions. So you could start with their free versions and then transfer over. Um, I've had great success with Mad Mimi. I am on um, the paid version now of that, but I have 10,000. 500 subscribers too. So, but every single day they automatically get a reminder and, and there's lots of ways to tweak that and customize it. Do you want to give them the whole blog post in an email? Do you want to give them just a snippet? Um, but every single day uh, my readers get a reminder that says new blog post and it shares a snippet of it and reminds the readers to hop over and check it out. And some of my readers that is what they count on. They don't like Facebook. They're not on this Pinterest. What my mother, what is Pinterest? I don't understand that. You know, I mean, every, you have to think that you've got different kinds of readers that are in different types of seasons of their own. And they, you need to be able to meet the needs of those people. Um, so having your feed is super, super important. And to be able to sure to hit with one automatic email that goes out, 10,000 people is powerful and that is, it's needed. That's what's going to remind them. I've told y'all before, I'll watch my live analytics um, on Google AdSense or on Google Analytics and when that feed hits, I just see the traffic trickling in and then I can see, okay, they went to today's post and then from there, this is where it led them to and these, you know, just came on and exited and these, I can see all of that. I can see who forwards from my, um, from, that's one thing that I love about Mad Mimi, and I'm sure that other services offer it as well, but I love that I can see um, if somebody forwards 
the uh, information that they get in my RSS delivery email. So some of them will actually forward that to a friend and say, you know, check this out or whatever. And all of that is our stats that are trackable. So I really, really, if you do not have a feed set up, you need to stop today and get that done. It's super, super important. Uh, let me see if you guys have any questions. Um, doesn't look like there's specific questions about that. Okay. So the next thing that I suggested was develop a consistent posting schedule and stick to it. Decide if you want to post three times a week, five times a week, etc. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but stick to it. So this is going to get you steady content going. Okay, this is going to get that reader instead of just updating when the baby gets a new tooth because now you're not just scrapbooking. Now you're not just journaling. Now you are sharing. This is a commitment that you're making, right? So um, you want to, you need to decide what your schedule is going to be. And just because your friend or this blogger that you admire blogs seven days a week, that does not mean that you have to blog seven days a week. But your readers need to know what to expect and you need to have steady content so that Google's constantly having a reason to search your site. And you need to have um, content that's constantly hitting your feed that you set up that reminds them to come to your site because every time they come to your site, hopefully they're going to be, they're going to find new things that they didn't find the last time they were there. So you're, you're getting your brand in, your, in their head. You're reminding them that Crystal & Co. is a great place to go and get mommy resources and mommy solutions. Every day she shares something. So, <clears throat> or every Monday, Wednesday, Friday she shares something. And people read so many blogs, they can't remember, they're not going to remember that you blog Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but they are going to remember seeing your updates consistently in their inbox. And that's important. And then, by having a consistent schedule, not only are all of those things happening, but now you have, we've talked about in many of our hangouts how 20% of your um, social media shares need to be you, about you, about your blog, and 80% need to be where you're sharing other people. So here's your 20%. Here's a new blog post that you can promote for those people that use Facebook and, um, and use it as the reminder to come check your site out. So, and really 80, 20, 70, 30, somewhere in there. Just, you don't want for your um, social media feeds to be just, or your social media communities just promoting yourself. You want to promote other people um, more than you promote yourself. But as you have those new blog posts, go share it on those social media platforms, and there's the 20 to 30% that you're sharing about you. So, um, so having a consistent schedule is really, really important. And I also recommend that on your new Start Here page or on your About Me page um, or about this blog or whatever, that you put that out there. And you say, you will find a new blog post for me five to six days a week. Or you'll find a new blog post for me Monday through Saturday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it is. And there's two reasons that that's a really good thing to share with your readers. Number one, it's good because it makes you accountable. Because now you've put it out there that you're going to do this. And now you have to be accountable. So Tuesday night, you're getting that blog post ready for Wednesday. Or Wednesday, you know, you're 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 just being accountable. Um, you are reaching that point where it's like, what is this worth to you? Are you truly going to put the work into it? Do you have it in you to truly stay committed to what you said you're going to do, and to grow that blog and that brand and that that readership? And so um, I think that it's so important to put that out there so that your readers know what to expect and to help you be accountable. I think it's really important. Um, now I'm going to hop over to some of the things that Kelly shared because these um, need to be said before the next two that I uh, gave as tips. You need to go in and set up your AdSense. That's Kelly's thinking. That is so right. I, I agree 100%. And the reason you want to go ahead and set up AdSense is because the majority of blogs that apply for AdSense get approved. Where blog her, there's a, there's a different approval process. Or Burst Media um, or... Um, any of the other ad network, affiliate ad network groups. There's a lot of them out there, but AdSense, pretty much you get in. Um, they do have some stipulations that um, I've heard, like people that have blogs that only talk about alcohol, so, you know, only making cocktails or whatever. I think those people have been denied, or some of them have, and the reason was because they didn't, I guess they didn't want to promote that. I don't know what it was, but, um, Seriously, I would say 
percent of everybody that applies gets in to Google AdSense. So it's an easy and quick way to get started with affiliate ad networks. Now, um, you are not going to make money when you first start putting ads on your site for your blog. Okay, everybody needs to understand that. Um, this is a labor of love. This is a commitment. We've already talked about making the commitment. This is about getting your brand out there, um, growing. You are not going to make money in the very beginning. Holly Homer will tell you you're going to make more money working at McDonald's than you will on a blog for quite a while. Um, this, if this is something that you're passionate about, then this, then people will see that and know that and love your site, and it will keep them coming back. If this is something that's out of um, just wanting to make money, and um, or if there's greed behind it or whatever, this is not going to do well for you because it is going to take you a long time to get to the point where you're making profit. So, it's really, really important that you understand that going into this. Now. Yes, there was a time when coupon bloggers, somebody could start a coupon blog and within a couple of months they were making money. That doesn't exist anymore. <coughs> Actually, excuse me, you'll notice that a lot of your coupon bloggers have started really acknowledging, I would say in the last year, in 2013, they really recognized, and I think it's because the world didn't end, everybody was stockpiling, everybody was you know, hoarding and collecting all this stuff and wanting to do extreme couponing and we had this extreme coupon show and whatever and people were stockpiling and they um, they they were doing this. Maybe they didn't really think that the world was going to end, but there was that stigma that, you know, whatever. And so now people, there's really not, um, people are not as into coupons as they were, you know. Um, even though I'm a mom blogger or, you know, share, I share mommy resources and solutions, I would share coupons. And two and three years ago or two years ago, a coupon would do really well on my site and get downloaded and get clicked on. Now, people are not interested. That coupon wave is over. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not a group of coupon bloggers that are still doing well. Yes, there are a group of them, but you'll notice that they're starting to write about evergreen content. They're starting to share things like recipes and tutorials and those kinds of things because they acknowledge and understand that it's like I've said, the longer you blog, the, the quicker you realize that the more you're around, the more things change. Blogging is constantly changing. So, my original point was that you're not going, you know, yes, years back you could start a coupon blog and start making money quickly. Um, but that's not, that's not the case anymore. So just understand that this commitment that you're making, it is a commitment. It needs to be from a place of passion and not greed. And you need to understand that you're not going to make tons of money right out of the gate. Okay, sorry. I really have a head cold. Okay, um, let me see some of the questions that are coming through. Okay, so now we're talking about um, time. Consist Vanessa says, consistent post posting is my biggest challenge. It takes me forever to write a post, take pics, edit pics, and create printables. I totally get that, Vanessa. Um, now, Kelly is super structured, okay? She has a blog post, she'll tell you, that goes live at, I think, 8 a.m., 12, 12 p.m., and or 8, 10, and 12, I think, are her times. I don't remember. She could tell you. But she's super structured that way. And when she's running behind, she doesn't like it. Um, now, for me, I just want to get a blog post out every day. So as long as it gets out before my feed hits, I'm happy. So I have my daily Amazon deal that goes out, and then I have a post that is either, you know, that's potentially, hopefully my evergreen content, my, my newest craft, whatever. So sometimes it goes live early in the morning, sometimes it's noon, sometimes it's not till we're done with schoolwork, sometimes it's six o'clock and my feed hits at seven. But the point is, it gets out there. So I would say, Vanessa, if that's a real struggle for you, don't, um, don't be hard on yourself. Don't think that you have to have it done by this certain time. Um, because you want for blogging to be something that you love. You don't want it to be something that there's all these um, handicapping things about it. You want, I mean, obviously there is some structure and rules that we need to follow, but that's probably not your fight, and that's not where you want to focus. Just getting your good quality content out there consistently is what I would focus on. 
Uh, Teresa says, do you post at the same time daily or do you or did you try different times for publishing? To help increase readership, I am on the West Coast, so I have, I was just curious if you have tried different times to see if that helps increase your page views. Um, well, for me, I'm really not consistent on a time at all. I like for my feed to hit at 7 p.m. There are times that I have to change my feed time because I have not gotten my blog post done. Um, so uh, that that's the kind of thing that makes Kelly scream probably. Kelly's very consistent and structured and that works for her. Um, but for me, I feel like as long as my feed can hit at 7, that's that seems to be my jackpot time for my readership. But it's like you're saying, Teresa, we have to figure out what our readers want. And all of our readers are going to want something different. Um, I know a lot of preschool or um, bloggers who focus on activities for kids who as long as their po they like for their posts to go out, I get their feed, I subscribe to their feeds, and those go out like at 9 a.m. or noon or whatever, and that's probably perfect for them because kids are napping or what have you, and the mom has time to sit down and read them. So I think what you're doing is right. You're considering what your readership is and your demographic, and that's what you need to focus on. I do encourage you to play with your feed time and see, um, you know, just try it out and play with it and you'll know what works and you'll know what um, what your readers want. Now, like I said, for me it's not necessarily what time the blog post goes live, it's just getting my feed, ensuring that I can stay at that 7 o'clock spot for my feed. Um, Barbara says, she's re uh, responding to Vanessa, I find having a paper monthly editorial calendar to fill out with post topics plus starting a draft every time I think of something really helps me with producing content on a regular basis. I love that. So yeah, the next time you're searching for SEO quality um, keywords or the next time you're on Webmaster Tools and it, we know that it only gives us three months of information. So the next time that you're on there collecting um, you know, what was popular right over the last three months and what Google's sending you traffic for. Take that information and do what Barbara has said and plug it into um, blog post drafts. And just, I do that too, Barbara. So when I find a keyword that I want to work on or expand on or a topic, what have you, I go in and I save it as the title, whatever that keyword is, that's what I put as the title and I jot a few notes down in the draft area and I may even go in and fill out all my meta, like my meta title, my meta description, what have you. And then that way I have everything ready to go so that when I need a post idea or when I'm ready to finish that post, I already have the leg, a lot of the basic information done and from there I know do I want to do a roundup post for this and reach out to other bloggers to submit ideas. <coughs> Excuse me, is this a new craft I need to do with my kids? Is this a recipe I need to make? What have you. But I think it's perfect to go in and start creating basic drafts. I mean, you're not preparing the content. You're just saving that keyword or saving that word or phrase and sharing, writing down some thoughts or notes. And then from there, you can take it from there. I love that. Um, Cassie says that she's the same as Vanessa, but recently started a blog calendar and it helps me keep my goals. We have an entire, um, we've done a couple of hangouts two or three that focus on editorial calendars. So we've shared different ways to do that. Um, I shared how I do it. Kelly shared how he she does it. We had Diana Kennedy come on. She shared how she does it. So those um, we'll find those links as well and share them here so that you guys can, because uh, an editorial calendar is a great way to keep you um, on track and um, accountable for what you want to write about. Hillary says, Teresa, if you have the post written, I post at 6.30 a.m. with social media posts sprinkled throughout the day. If, like today, I'm still writing, I'll post when it's done. And that, that reminds me of a, of a great point. So sometimes if I don't get done with my post until midnight or 1 o'clock, I don't let it, it doesn't go live then. Um, I do what Hillary says. I wait for it to go live at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock in the morning. And then I'm kind of ahead of the game for that day, for that next day, because I've already had a post that's hit. So that's a really good um, pointer to share. Barbara says, I publish my post at 6 a.m. and use an auto post plugin to push out the post to Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and Facebook about an hour or so later. Love that. Super smart. Vanessa says, she started one too, Cassie, but still struggling to keep up. Baby steps, so I guess that's an editorial calendar. Uh, Brain Power Boy says, thanks for the tips. What are you using to auto post? So uh, Barb shares that, um, I think. Let's see. Uh, 
I'm using NextScript's auto poster. The paid version handles more than one social network. The free only does one. Okay, so Barb says, Vanessa, mix up your post links. Go back and post links, the length of your post. Go back and forth between short and long posts to give yourself some time to work on the longer post. I think that's great. And something to consider is um, you really want for your blog post to be 300 plus words. Once you start reaching a point, this is my this is my advice here. This is my personal preference, and I think Kelly agrees with this. Once a post starts reaching, you know, okay, so we're at 500 words. Now it's a little more lengthy. People may not stick around to read the whole thing. Over 500 words, and now we're reaching 700 words. That's a series. So you need to see how can I break this down into smaller chunks, and then you've got multiple posts that can go out over the same topic. Um, let's see, Teresa says, I have some posts written but haven't published today yet. Normally I publish the night before. I hear ya, I was without internet for two days so the week is wonky for me. Yeah, I think all the storms that are going on, a lot of people are, are dealing with that. Um, Cindy says, sometimes to start blogging, thinking you're going to have to be in one niche and then that changes over time. That's right. I mean, sometimes we totally morph and I didn't write about you know, activities for kids until I started homeschooling and started realizing, oh, these are things that I can write about about my kids and what we're doing. When I first started taking blogging more seriously, um, I wrote about raising twins, raising boys, my struggles, um, and then the solutions that I would find. Those were the things that I focused on. I didn't even want to share recipes because I wasn't a food blogger and I didn't have, I didn't feel like I could, you know, I didn't want the pressure of having to take good pictures and I didn't feel like I took good pictures or whatever. So it wasn't until I shared a recipe as a guest post on eatathomecooks.com, which is Tiffany King, that I realized, huh, you know what? I could, I, I did a couple of those and then I'm like, well, why can't I share this on my site? I did it. It's, it's done well. People liked it, but you know, that's not your comfort zone. So we morph, we totally morph and things um, expand and change. Becky says, what kind of program are you using for your digital printables? I would like to find one that I can upload a hand-drawn image and turns it into a nice line digital drawing. <clears throat> um, Vanessa says, I just use Word and uh, I guess that's PowerPoint. I pay for my clock for my clip art, so not sure what you're looking for. Cassie Osborne might have more info. I just started using Publisher. Kelly's used Publisher for forever. She's told me for a long time to use it. I just started using it to make printables so that I didn't have to buy printables. Um, and I like it, but I am not savvy enough to tell you if you can upload an image and convert it to art to work, but Cassie does know a lot. I would totally ask her. Um, Let's see, Vanessa likes Next Scripts too for scheduling stuff out. Melissa says, to encourage new bloggers, there's also the option of blogging much less often, like once or two times per week or whatever, and still earn a good income. I do. Melissa says she does. I do. Um, just be consistent, as Crystal said. That's right. That's exactly right. You. The point is to be consistent. Let your readers know what to expect and you know, have something that Google can constantly be crawling. <clears throat> and indexing and be accountable. Uh, Barbara says, great idea about the multiple posts crystal and link back to the older ones to keep your readers. Yes, that is key. So when you, to keep your readers reading, link back to that content. So when you're sharing something, you know, figure out a way to work in. If you're working on a keyword, then you can easily refer them to the other posts that way. Or somewhere in the post you can say, here was part one, part two, part three. Or at the end of the post you can say, other twin tip topics. And here's my top, here's my tips for strollers for twins. Here's my tips for high chairs for twins. Here's my and so here's the rest of the series for them. That's really key. You do not want for people to have to work hard to find all of that. Okay, I'm gonna keep going on um, <clears throat> the things that Kelly says we need to set up. So the other things outside of AdSense, boy did we get off on that one. Um, set up webmaster tools and set up analytics. Do it now. There's a video that I can share with you that Kelly has found that she that we've shared with people when they take our class if they don't have webmaster tools set up it is something that needs to be set up now it is the information that's going to tell you if you're doing well with um, Google it's going to tell you what Google is um, finding when they search on your site and what Google sees you as the expert for 
<coughs> so Webmaster Tools is super important that you get that set up now. And the same for Google Analytics. Because with Google Analytics, that's going to tell you um, what um, Google Analytics is going to tell you where your traffic's coming from. It's really going to help you be able to dive in and see what you're doing well and what you can continue to work on. Um, and I believe we have some hangouts out there about that as well. Um, Kelly says, know your niche and be true to it. That's very true. Now there is this morphing process and sometimes we start to dabble in other topics. Um, so, you know, I share recipes, I share ways to save, I share homeschool and kids activities. So, you know, I'm kind of over, I'm, I'm under this big umbrella. I didn't just, you know, I, I slowly morphed and I slowly worked that stuff in. And it wasn't like I said, um, you know what, I think I'm going to just start writing about this random topic that I really know nothing about. It was part of what was changing in my life. Now we were homeschooling. So I thought, well, this is a mommy solution. If I'm loving this curriculum, or if I'm struggling with teaching my kids how to skip count or read or whatever or keep their attention while I'm reading aloud to them, other moms are too. So it, it was just a natural morphing process that allowed me to share <clears throat> other content with my readers. So know your niche and be true to it. Um, all right, the next thing that I'm going to tell you is this was my this was my next advice to um, the lady who left the comment on my site was to visit other blogs and to comment. And this kind of leads off of something that Kelly has shared as a tip too. So I said visit other blogs and comment. I would make a commitment to do this to at least five blogs a day. You're doing this to get your name out there but also to build some community and relationships with other bloggers. Your comments need to be genuine and focus on their blog and not yours. So the beauty in this is that you are sharing, um, you know, you're going on and you're sharing a comment or you're leaving a comment on a site that's relevant to you um, and you're leaving a genuine comment, this sparks some conversation. You're getting a link back because when you fill out the information, you're linking and leaving your URL. So if they think that your comment is interesting, they're going to click through. As you start to and, and visit your site and get to know you, and maybe that's the blog owner, maybe that's one of their readers, but now now you're talking, you're mingling, you're at the party and you're and you're mingling, okay? And that's really important for building relationships in the blogging world. So um, by leaving five comments a day, you're getting links from your blog out there, you're meeting new bloggers, and you're advertising your blog without being obnoxious and advertising it. So you're making the comment about them and about the great thing that they're sharing um, and how it resonates to you or connects to you or relates to you. Um, but they have the option to click through and go to your site and learn more about you. So essentially it's a free, it's a free link. Um, now if you go on there and you say, oh, go visit my blog post about this, that can be a little obnoxious. If they have a, um, it, it just depends on how you do it. It really can be obnoxious. But um, if, if they use Comment Love and it automatically uh, populates some of your <coughs> most current blogging tips or most cur current blog posts, then it will automatically share your most current blog post with that reader. So it's not even about whether or not they click on your name to go to your site, um, but now they see it automatically populated one of your most current blog posts, and they're like, "Oh, that's an interesting topic." She shared ten tips for potty training. I want to, you know, I want to know more about that. So, make it a commitment. I think Kelly's the one that said a, a long time ago. She gave me that advice: go and leave comments on five other blogs every day. That's getting your name out there. People will be like, "Oh, I've seen." So then your your little profile picture, your favicon or whatever that shows up is from your website. It's part of getting your brand out there, getting your name out there. They know, oh, that's Crystal from Crystal & Co. or what have you. So Kelly's tip was um, to join groups with similar interests. And so that's part of the same kind of thing. So Kelly is probably saying something like um, join Facebook groups that have similar interests, but it's all about getting your brand out there. It's all about um, mingling within groups. So join some Facebook groups like the Facebook group that we have for the Learn to Blog um, for the Learn to Blog group. 
that's that's a group to get to know each other. You're showing up every week at this Google Plus Hangout. You're getting to to recognize familiar faces. You're recognizing Linda Sears and and uh, Becky Jorgensen, and you're like, oh yeah. And she was telling us last week about whatever. You're building relationships online, and that's what joining groups will help you do. And that's what leaving comments on other sites will help you do as well. You're getting your name and your brand out there, and you're building relationships, and that is super super important. Um, number five is, my number five, was to share your posts on all social media platforms. Every post should be pinned, shared on Facebook, tweeted out, etc. So as soon as a blog post goes live for me, if it goes live during the day, if it's something that, like I said earlier, if I don't get the blog post done until midnight or so, then I will hold it and I won't make it live till in the morning most of the time. But um, once that post goes live, I have my routine. I immediately go in and it gets pinned to multiple boards and that's scheduled via viral tag. Um, it gets an automatic tweet out. That's a that's some plugin that my design person set up for me um, with my blog where it automatically actually it may be part of my template that I have on WordPress, but it automatically tweets my stuff out uh, to Twitter and then it gets shared on Facebook. Now, I may not share it that day on Facebook, but it gets shared. Like I've told you guys many times, every single week there's constantly five blog posts that I'm promoting. And we just went over this in our Learn to Blog class, our private class that we have, um, that some of you guys are a part of uh, this time around. But every week I have five blog posts that I'm linking up to Linky Parties. That's your next step. So that would be my next thing, even though um, we're not going to go into all of that. Once you've gotten all of this legwork done and the very ground level work done, your next step is to start hitting the pavement and going out, linking up to Linky Parties. Um, and I make sure that every week there are five blog posts that I'm sharing at Linky Parties and on all of social media. Um, <clears throat> you're working with a tribe. You know, we just keep pushing those dominoes over. After you do this legwork with your brand new blog that, you're, that you've started, there's more. There's more work. There's always more work to be done. Uh, but what we're sharing today is just the very basic stuff. But you want to make sure that those posts that you're creating, that new content, gets pinned and shared on Facebook. And like, for example, if you were doing a recipe, take a picture of the recipe while you're in the making process. And then once that post goes live, share that picture on, Pinterest, on uh, Instagram and say, hey, um, this was delicious to make earlier today, you know, whatever. Here's what we spent our day making and creating. We were baking or what have you. Go to my blog now for the, for the finished version or to see how it turned out and to get the recipe. And so that's another social media platform that's really booming right now that, um, that people are wanting to connect with you on and that's a great way to do it. So you want to share all of those posts over on social media. Um, Kelly's last uh, tip was to start a feed with similar blogs and frequent them. So this is a great way to, when we go back to talking about commenting on five blogs every day, um, this is a great way to do that. Start a feed that collects, you know, 10 blogs that are in your niche that you like, that you enjoy reading. Some of those can be really big blogs. I mean, you know, Pioneer Woman's a blog that I love to read. She's, she probably has no idea that I exist, but I do still read her stuff, and from time to time I do leave a comment. But <coughs> her readers are people that I can connect with, and maybe she's someone I can connect with too. So I have big, big bloggers, and I have little bloggers that I follow too. It doesn't matter if it's a blogger that I feel like I'm interested in, or we have similar lives, or we're in the same niche then I love this suggestion from Kelly to create a feed of those similar blogs and that's how you're reminded to frequent them. So there's a couple of reasons why you're doing this. Number one, you're frequenting them so that you can network with them and so that you can leave comments and start to build relationships with them. But you have so much to learn from these bloggers too. When you get to their site, why do you enjoy their blog? When you're on there, is it because it's user friendly? Is it because it's easy to navigate? Is it because you love the way they set up? Man, this is so easy to figure out how to get to all of their recipes and how they have their recipe box set up or their recipe index. You have something to learn all the time. Then you can take that information back to your blog and be a user of your own site. So go in and say, you know what, is my site as easy to maneuver through as these blogs that I love were? 
Or when you're on one of those blogs that you love and something isn't working right, like their search box isn't working and that frustrates you, that's information to learn from. Now go to your blog and apply that. How easy is it to search on my blog? Because if I'm frustrated with hers, people are frustrated with mine if the same thing's happening to them. It's a constant learning process. You're constantly studying and learning all the time. So it really is important. I love Kelly's suggestion to start a feed or a list of blogs that are similar to yours and frequent them so that you can start connecting with them, so that you can learn from them, so that you can build a community with them. It is super, super important. Okay. So those are our tips for um, getting a blog going from the very ground level. I want to go through some of the other questions that are here. Ladies, if you have additional things that you want to share as we go along, please list them now. I would be happy and I would love to share them because you're in the trenches too. Whether your blog is brand new and you know what you're struggling with, or if your blog is three months old or a year old, no matter where you stand, you have something valuable to add to this because you're a blogger and you're a reader. You're a blog, you're a content creator and you're a blog reader. So you have both aspects of ways to be able to provide valuable, con valuable um, pointers and tips to this as well. So let me go through here. Um, uh, Janissa, is that how you say your name? She says, Crystal, I'm getting great traffic on my newest blog, but I need to figure out how to keep them as regular readers. What do you recommend? A newsletter? You can just call me Jesse, by the way. Okay, Jesse. So yes, your regular readers, I definitely recommend that you set up a, um, that you have a really good uh, blog feed set up. And I use Google Reader forever and ever, and then I just switch to, um, Mad Mimi, I guess back in January or so. And one of the things that I really suggest is that you offer your readers, you make the subscribing process simple and, and obvious. So it needs to be above the fold. It could be a pop-up. It could be a hello bar. I've been on your site. Actually, I think I've got your tab open on my other computer that's at my desk. Um, you have the Latino Homemaker blog, I think. Is that right? Um, but, and I believe, are you using Hello Bar? I can't remember, but I, your site looks great. You're doing a great job. Um, but that's, I love Hello Bar. That's what I added to Crystal & Co. back in January. And my subscribers went from three to 4,000. It was fluctuating between three and 4,000 to now I'm over 10,500. And that was um, when all that stuff went viral. And I've just, you know, continued to, to gain new readers from it. So, and I offer a free printable. So they get a free meal planning printable. And I don't just say subscribe here for free. You need to make this easy for them. Tell them. If you go to my site, you see that it says join 10,500 other moms and get a free printable meal planner when you subscribe for my email updates. Then it has a place for them to put their email and then they subscribe. The only thing with Hello Bar and Mad Mimi is I have to manually go in. It doesn't automatically sync. And there may be an option for that, and I just don't know about it. But best I can tell, I have to manually update it. So a couple of times a week, I go in and update and and uh, merge them and manually and pull those subscribers over. So that's the only thing I don't like. But I'm okay with that because it allows me to constantly have my hand in it and to constantly be um, aware of how many new subscribers I'm getting. Oh, I had a lot of subscribers fall over the last week, so what did I do wrong? Where was my content not right? Did I do too much posting about these topics and didn't spread my topic content out over you know, the course of a week or two weeks? So it, it really makes me aware of what's going on. So I'm totally fine with doing some of that manual stuff. But um, I absolutely suggest that I love Hello Bar and you need a good subscribing service. It is super important that your readers have a reminder daily to know to come back to your site and, uh, and read your new content. Linda says, as a new blogger, I would get frustrated hearing people say, link back, link back, link back, when I have nothing to link back to. But now a year later, I'm finding many posts to link back to and I'm seeing the benefits of it finally. So are you saying that um, link back within your own site? <clears throat> like if you share a post today on how to make uh, how to make homemade Play-Doh, um, you know, as you make more homemade Play-Doh recipes, then you would have more things to link back to. 
So my suggestion, if you don't have a lot of stuff to link back to, my suggestion would be to really consider what you're writing about then. Because your content should always be building off of each other and it should all be relevant to one another. So if you don't have, I mean if you're creating new content say three times a week, within a month you should be able to start really heavily linking back to other content that you've created because it's all connected and it's all relevant. And that's the perp that's the point. Google, when you look at your Webmaster Tools, if Webmaster Tools says that these are the things you're getting the most impressions for, and at the end of the day you say, I don't even write about that, then you're not writing enough about the content that you want Google to know that you're known for. So that's where you need to step it up a notch, and you need to start writing more about, you know, um, whatever, twin tips or whatever it is that you're writing about. And if you're writing once a week about those those topics that you feel like your blog is about, then very quickly you'll have things to link back to. So that's really, really important to be aware of. Uh, Miss Helen says, when I first started blogging, I visited at least 10 blogs a day and left comments. I still visit a lot of blogs and comment. Let me tell you something. Miss Helen has a weekly um, linky that she does. She's been on my linky list since that story that I tell you guys where I took my blog from 10,000 page views a month to 30,000 by sitting down and creating, you know, five or ten blogs a day that I could link up to. Miss Helen has been on that list since the very beginning and I will tell you that every single week, so you share recipes on her site and um, every single week when you link something up, she comments on everything that you link up. So say I've got five blog posts that I'm linking up this week and two of them are food and two of them are kids activities and one of them is a, a, a printable or whatever. Anything that I link up, if I link up those two recipes to Miss Helen, every single week I get comments from her from whatever I, I linked up to and it's been that for as long as I've been linking up. She is true with what she says and that is really important and that's how when she started watching these Learn to Blog Hangouts, I know her. I know her face because she's branded that image. I've seen that image before on her site. It's all about branding. It's all about nurturing relationships and building communities. It's all about connecting and she is doing an amazing job of that and that's a great example. Um, Barbara says, I used to comment just in the morning before the kids got up and I started commenting a second time in the afternoon which helps with my traffic plus helps me see more blogs. Exactly. The more that you're getting out there and connecting with other with other blogs, the more that you're, you're um, seeing more blogs and seeing how, what I said earlier, you know, what makes this a good blog that you want to read? I'm always asking myself that. <coughs> Excuse me. When I'm on the blog and I'm like, I love this. I love how everything is set up and how easy it is to maneuver. Now I know to take that information and go back to my blog and say, now I know how to grade my blog personally. And I can say, am I doing a good job organizing my content? Is my search box working the way that it should? Is my site easy and user friendly to maneuver? That's great, Barb. And that's leaving those comments is a great way to connect and a great way to grade yourself and um, and see where you stand in the blogging world with when you're looking at your site and other sites and how um, and how they they work Cassie says I get up before my girls to do my links and try to comment when I can and you know what let me tell you I, I have shared this before in other hangouts that we've done I used to work in corporate America a long time ago um, before our twins were born and one of the common things that you see in successful CEOs, CFOs, uh, you know, senior managers of departments or whatever, they all get started before everybody else. They all get up and get started before everybody else does and before the distractions arrive at work and before the fires start needing to be put out. Every motivational book that you read about some successful Warren Buffett or Zig Ziglar or whomever, they talk about you getting up and starting their day before everybody else. And that is what I do in the blogging world. I get as much, I can get, I've told you guys this before, I can get hours worth of work done in two hours, getting up two hours before my kids and my husband. I can get so much work done that, that really would equal, you know, a five or six hour day. Um, so whether that's getting my house clean or getting blog work done, I have no distractions. It's peace. It's me. It's 
focused energy getting stuff done. And Cassie, I completely agree with that. So maybe you're not the morning person that gets up before everybody else. Maybe you stay up later after everybody goes to bed. But you'll notice that successful bloggers, a lot of them do that. They're either concentrating when there's no distractions early in the morning or late at night once everybody's in bed. But it's something that if you can carve out time to do that, I highly recommend it. Becky says, when you do a linky party, do you link all five to the same party? I do too, but kind of wonder if that's okay. Becky, every party has different roles. For me, on the linky party that I do for um, on Crystal & Co., I don't care how many things you link up. Um, people typically, there's a lot of people that only link one thing, but most people link between three and five things. Now, my party, it's easy to do that because it's very generic in general. I accept recipe, anything that's a mommy solution or a mommy resource. So printables, recipes, meal planning, um, pr uh, preschool stuff, kids' activities, homeschooling, whatever. All those things are a good fit. Now, other blogs, if I'm on Miss Helen's blog, um, I'm not going to be able, if I'm sharing, if one of, if two of my five links are preschool activities, obviously those aren't good fits. So they set their roles read through that. Some of them say no more than three links. Some of them set out very specific rules for you. Just read through that. But it is just fine to share three to five things on one party if their roles allow that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, as a person who hosts a party, I want you to share. I mean, I don't want you to come in and share 50 links. That would be, you know, a little, a little much. But, um, you know, if you came in and shared five links, I would be so happy with that. I want that because you're providing content for my readers to, to read and click through on. And I'm able to provide that for you, so I want you to use it. Tammy says, I feel like commenting on blogs is becoming a lost art. You're right, uh, Tammy. The longer, you know, as blogging evolves, there's a lot of things that first generation bloggers did that current generation bloggers don't do. And one of those is leaving comments because what happened is people realized that we that people realized that it was possible to make money at blogging. So as soon as people realized that, people started creating blogs just to make money. And what does that do? You bomb. And so they forget how to nurture the relationship. They forget how to build communities. They don't care about commenting and and growing and getting to know people. They want they keep saying, "Show me the money." So that's where part of that problem comes in and it really is a lost art. Most people, she says, most people talking about myself here, she says, just pin an item and go on. I've been challenged to get more uh, diligent in leaving comments before I pin a project. I think that's great. That is, the people that you're leaving those comments for, comments are so few and far between now. It takes having, for me, it takes having a viral post before I get some really, well, it takes having a viral post to get a hundred comments anymore. We're used to, you know, three or four years ago, I could share something and that was the nature of how blogging worked. Everybody left a comment and that doesn't happen anymore. And now, you know, like I made Silly Putty a month ago. I think I have 20 comments on that post, which is awesome. <coughs> that doesn't always happen anymore. But it's because it got shared and it went viral a little bit. And so that's why I have 20 comments on that post where another uh, post that I shared um, that was a recipe, it didn't go viral. So it has no comments or it has two comments. So unfortunately, I couldn't agree with you more. It is a lost art and people do just pin and move on. And I think your method is really good and really wise and you should continue doing that and we should learn from you. Barbara says, sometimes I do all five Becky. She's talking about linky parties, usually in the bigger parties. Typically, I do two to three for the smaller linky parties. So just read the rules. Do what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with leaving five, then don't do it. Uh, Rona says, good morning. Good morning. We're happy that you're here. Uh, Barbara says, I'm struggling a bit with my newsletter. I don't feel like I've found the right voice, and my promotion isn't getting many people to sign up. I have a sign up at the top of my site and then the hook at the beginning of each post. Barbara, I had a hook that I had installed at the end of each post and that it was there for two years and it really didn't bring in many people. I'm telling you, when I set up Hello Bar, I'm, I've been really pleased with the results. Now granted, I've had some stuff go viral since that uh, Hello Bar was added, but that's key. It is really key to have that stuff set up so that when something goes viral, and it doesn't have to go viral where you get 100,000 page views, you know, going viral can mean you get 2,000 hits for it today, and maybe tomorrow it starts to fizzle off, but it, it went viral. So it's really important that you have those 
easy subscription methods and those valuable subscription methods that will pull people in, what are you going to give me for subscribing? So I shared with you how I have mine set up and the verbiage that I use, and people sign up for that. And then the delivery method is it's in Mad Mimi. So at the bottom of my, um, so this cost me, I, I, I didn't have to spend extra time working with other platforms to get that free printable delivered. It's included in my Mad Mimi. So what I do is at the very bottom it says, it's an automatic thing that shows up every single time my feed goes out that says, here's the free printable for subscribing. Thank you so much. So they don't just get it one time. They get it every time that it's delivered. So they don't have to go back and find that original uh, email that was delivered to them that had that free printable. They get it every single time that my emails delivered to them. And they like that. It gets tons of clicks and it's really great. So maybe just uh, take a look at and consider the service that you're using. Consider the method that you're asking people to sign up. Um, is it a pop-up? Is it valuable? What are you offering them for signing up? Look at some of the blogs that you subscribe to. What pulled you in? What sold you on it? Mimic that. Um, <clears throat> figure out how you can utilize that to your advantage on your blog. <clears throat> Let's see. Cindy says, it's taken me 10 minutes to learn that I need to stop comparing myself to other bloggers, especially those who have been blogging forever. I can definitely learn from them that, that I cannot be any of them. I can only be myself. Cindy, that is so true, so true, and I don't tell you to look at other blogs. I'm not telling anyone to look at other blogs to compare yourself in that way, but I am telling you what you just said. How can I learn from them? That is really, really important. You have to be content with you, and if you're passionate about the content that you're creating, then it's all going to work out. You're not going to go and, and feel like you need to, every time you visit a new blog, that you need to change your blog to look like theirs. If you're content with what you're doing and you're writing about what you're passionate about, then it will be a learning experience and not something where you're constantly beating yourself up. Mitzi says, how often should I send updates to subscribers? Is daily too often? My readers love daily. I love daily. That's what I do. I recently changed my email alert to ex to an excerpt to push readers to the blog itself. Yeah, I only share a portion because I don't want my information scraped, um, and I want them to have a reason to go to my blog. So Mitzi, I do the same thing, and I have good results with it. Rona says, I keep hearing the term uh, branding. Recently, I heard that people are misunderstanding what branding is. What's your definition? Branding is when somebody thinks of Crystal & Co., they think of uh, they think of me and on my social media platforms and my blog, and they know branding is how I define myself online in the blogging world. That is my brand. Um, branding is also people being able to recognize that. So Kelly will tell me, hey, I saw on Pinterest a recipe that I think was yours because when I style a photo, it looks I have this this method. I have this. Um, it kind of all start not that it looks the same. Um, and mundane or whatever, but it does look similar. It has similarities to it. So that's part of your branding. Um, when I think of um, Pioneer Woman, I think of ranching life in a you know a city girl who who moves to the country. That is her brand. That is what her recipes are about. That is what her her stories are about that she that she shares constantly. Um, that is. That's part of what do you think of when you think of a blog, and um, that's part of branding. Um, let's see. She also, Rona also says that's so true. People aren't commenting like they used to. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, could it be that there are other distractions? I think that you know Pinterest has changed the way that that we blog. It makes us it's more instant gratification. Uh, we want to go through and find a blog post and find it now and find it quickly. And sometimes we just pin it so that we have it for later and then we never even go back and read the post. So in turn, it's it, it's made us more instant gratification in a lot of ways, as well as on blogs. We you arrive at a blog and we say this is great content and we pin it for later and then we come we have the intention to come back. Do we ever really come back? Well, we pinned it, we left, and now there's no opportunity to leave a comment. So you got to think about those things. Those are certainly the things that are happening. Um, Barbara says, thanks, Crystal. I need to work on creating printables. I know I have stuff that can be turned into printables. Printables are great. They're, your readers love them. They do well on Pinterest. They're great ways for uh, to, to get your readers invested in your site and for you to be a resource to come to so that they can get your content. Cindy says, oh, my goodness, I wasn't saying you were telling. No, no, no. I know that you weren't saying that. Not at all. Um, not whatsoever. But it made me realize that I needed to clarify that because I'm not encouraging don't I'm not encouraging anyone at all to go and copycat, but I am encouraging you, it's what you said. 
take that experience and how can I grow from it? How can I learn from it? How can I apply it? That's really, really what's important. So I hope that we still have lots of viewers still around this. Um, this today's hangout went um, beyond, and now we're 10 minutes past where we should be. And um, my kids and husband, it sounds like they're having a great time in the other room. So it's time for me to get off of here and go start homeschooling and getting some stuff done. Um, but I thank you guys so much for being here. I'm sad that Kelly had to miss today. Um, I'm sure that she's safe, and um, I'm sure that she would appreciate your prayers right now with the storm and stuff that's going on. But thank you guys so much for coming here every week. I hope that you learn something, even if you're seasoned. I'm constantly learning. I learn from you. I learn from Kelly. I mean, we're constantly, constantly learning. We don't know everything. So I hope that even though you're a seasoned blogger or you've been blogging for a while, that you came here today, and even though this was very ground, you know, the ground level, um, basic, basic stuff, I hope that you were able to apply some of that, and I hope that you can refer someone here to this Hangout whenever they say, I'm starting a new blog, but where do, how do I take it from here? How do I get viewers? It's a lot of information, and it's an overwhelming process, and you know that because you've been there. So this is a great... Um, a great hangout that you can send them to. So thank you for bearing with me today as I did this with, you know, trying to go through the screens and answer all the questions and my phone keeps ringing. But um, thank you guys. I appreciate you being here every week. Go do something amazing on your blog. Take this information and apply it. And we will see you next week. Have a great day. Bye.